The holy month of Ramadan will soon draw to a close and it will be time to celebrate Eid al-Fitr. This is also known as the Sweet Eid because of the dishes that are prepared to mark the happy end to the month of fasting. And Mela has lined up a menu to match the mood. Eid is a time of great celebration. I grew up in Durban, which means I got to celebrate Eid with Muslim friends and neighbours. I also got to feast, which was my favourite part. It was a great introduction to Muslim tradition and culture. I'm going to be doing some new twists on old favourite desserts today, so join me in the kitchen for a special surprise. I've just popped out to get some roses, and these are really fragrant. I'm going to use these rose petals to garnish some of my desserts today. We've got orange and pistachio barfi, barfi shoe puffs or profiteroles and a semolina eat cake. I'm starting out with the barfi and for that you're going to need some milk powder. This is a very simple recipe and you also need some dessert cream. So you mix these ingredients together until you find you get these crumbs. Now this needs to dry for about an hour or two and you can see it's quite crumbly as well. So just break them down with your fingertips. Let's start with the syrup. For that, water going into a pan. Add some sugar to the water and stir to dissolve. And I'm using a metal spoon for this. A wooden spoon is a lovely gadget to have in the kitchen, but it really doesn't work too well with flavoured syrups. You tend to get a bit of a garlic or chilli flavour perhaps in your syrup or your dessert. Always make sure the sugar crystals dissolve before you bring it up to the boil. This prevents the syrup from crystallizing. Now you can stop stirring the syrup, leave it to simmer and thicken. Now blitz the milk powder crumbs in a food processor until they're fine. That's the first batch done. I remember when we were kids and mum used to make barfi, she used to pass this mixture through a sieve and it took hours to get it through. So thank heavens for food processes. And the second batch. What took hours, now just takes minutes. And that's our milk powder done. Let's check on the syrup. Don't stir too much. Let's just test this. Let it cool down slightly. It should be quite sticky and starting to make strings between your fingertips. Ready for the next step. I've got some orange zest here. I got this idea from Persian cooking. They seem to use orange zest and the juice in desserts and cakes as well. Make some orange essence and some cardamom. Say about a teaspoon. This is freshly ground cardamom. Now the milk powder goes in. Just drop that in little batches. This is where you need to work quite quickly. Mix that through. And then gel food colouring. Just a touch. Work that through. The remaining milk powder going in. Pop that in. Butter goes in. About two tablespoons. And then pistachios. Chop these pistachios and not finely ground them. The ingredients are well combined. Come together quite nicely. And now you can turn any pan into a mould. You don't need a fancy silicone one. I'm just using some cling film and press that down into the pan. Grease this with non-stick spray just to prevent the barfi from sticking and scoop that barfi mixture into the mould. This looks like a pretty messy way of moulding barfi, but I quite like the shape it's going to give us. Gather up the edges, press the barfi down using the palms of your hands and then leave this to chill in the refrigerator until firm. Starting out with the barfi shoe puff. I first tried a shoe pastry recipe when I was in high school. It did seem very ambitious at the time and I was fascinated by it because the dough is first cooked and then it's baked. It seemed like almost like a magic trick. I'm going to show you how I make this. First ingredient, water going into the pan. And let's get the heat up. Butter going into the water. It's important not to overcook 
the butter and flour. It's starting to simmer gently. Flour going into the butter and water. And work those ingredients together. Stir that around until it forms a ball. I did say this is a bit like a magic trick. Now while this is cooling down, I'm going to start with the semolina eat cake. For that, we've got semolina going into a mixing bowl and then desiccated coconut, salt, two teaspoons of baking powder, about a cup of sunflower oil, two eggs, vanilla paste, now condensed milk. Oh, this looks really decadent. This is a super easy cake to make. Some lemon zest. And I've also got a bit of orange zest from my recipe earlier. And just use a spatula to work those ingredients together. Just pressing down. Now for this you'll need a 25 centimeter greased and lined loose bottom tin. Scoop the mixture into the tin. Spread that around. You can see the batter is really thick. This goes into a preheated oven at 170 degrees Celsius for 30 to 35 minutes. It should be golden and beautiful when you take it out. Let's check on the shoe paste. Use your finger just to check the temperature. It should be slightly warm, but not hot. Four beaten eggs going in. Use the spatula to break down that paste. Little more egg going in. And mix. Soil the mixture together. It's come together nicely. And you can see it's quite thick and glossy. And patience does pay off. This is the perfect shoe pastry. And then I've got a piping bag here. Spoon that mixture into the piping bag. The last of it. I've got a grease baking tray here. I just pipe little rounds onto the baking tray. The first one's always a bit messy. Leave some spaces in between. They do puff up a fair bit. That's done. Now use a spatula and just spray that with a bit of water and press down those pointy bits on top of the little puffs. They could burn in the oven, which could ruin the cream puff. The secret ingredient to making the magic in a shoe puff is a good spritz of water. It's the steam that makes them puff up and turn golden brown. These go into a preheated oven at 200 degrees Celsius for about 10 minutes. Reduce the heat to 180 degrees Celsius and leave them in there for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, use a toothpick or a skewer to pierce the puffs and put them back in the oven so that the steam doesn't make them soggy. I've let the shoe puffs cool down completely in the oven. I didn't want to take any chances. And while that was in the oven cooling down, I prepared a syrup for the Eid semolina cake. With lemon juice, sugar, lemon zest, orange zest, and a touch of water, pour the syrup over the cake. And it's best to pour this over a warm cake. And that's the last of the syrup. Use a spoon and gently work that over. This cake is best served after it's been left for about a day to soak. And now to garnish, just tiny flecks of gold leaf. Here are the roses. I've dusted them with edible gold dust and you can just place them like so. And that's the Eid cake done. Now for the Barafi shoe puffs, these are golden brown and when you tap them, they should sound quite hollow. This is perfect. You slice through them. You can see they should be hollow, quite beautiful on the inside. Now crumble some barfi into the cream. I've whipped some cream with vanilla and a bit of sugar as well. Now gently fold the barfi into the cream. 
Now to fill this, scoop some of that lovely butterfree cream into the shell of the pastry. Some coloured almonds going on top. To decorate these and to finish them up, pop them onto a little plate. Last one going on top. The classic garnish for this is some spun sugar. And I've got some sugar in a hot pan. Stir that around until the sugar dissolves. Aha, uh -huh, we're just about ready. You have to work quite quickly with this. And you also have to be very careful not to get a burn. Just drape that over the barfi shoe puffs. And to finish up on the barfi cream puffs, a light dusting of icing sugar going on top. This is my take on some old favorites. We've got the orange and pistachio barfi to go with that, a semolina eat cake, and lastly, those decadent barfi puffs. I'd like to wish my Muslim friends and our viewers a happy Eid.